God, holy and beloved, put on the heart of compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness and patience. Bearing with one another and forgiving each other, whoever has a complaint against anyone, just as the Lord forgive you, so also should you. Beyond all these things, put on love, which is the perfect bond of unity. Let us just turn to the Lord in prayer. Father God, as we continue to meditate your word, pray, Father God, that you will continue to speak to us. Pray, Lord God, that your word will come to us and, Lord God, instill our heart or rekindle our hearts and pray, Father God, that the very reason that we live in this world, Father, for the great commission that you have given us, Lord, in the midst of all other survival, you know, Lord God, your mercies and your kindness. Continue to bless us. The blessings are the meditation of your word. We pray this, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Now we started off with Matthew chapter 5 on verses 13 and 14 where we started off as that we are the light of the world and salt of the earth. There are two things that we share with you where we talk about light is something it shines, all right? Outward, people can see. You cannot put a light and then you can cover it. However it is, if the light will shine. So that's where the scripture calls us that you are the light of the world. And then the other word is used is you are the salt of the earth. Salt is when people begin to relate with you. Something that inward inside you. When they relate to you, they taste you and they say you're different. And this is what the Lord is calling us that we are to lead a transformed life in this conformed world. We are to here to present the unchanging Christ to the changing world. And that's what the Lord has called us. The Lord has called us as to be ambassadors. The Lord has called us to be become preachers, sharers of the gospel. But we all have somehow or other gone into our own comfort zone all these years. And we have not taken seriously the word of God. All right, to bring at least a soul into the kingdom of God. I've never said this fear. If you stand before the Lord our God in the judgment day, He's not going to talk about your sin, my sin. It's all buried. He's going to talk about what you did for the kingdom of God. The first question is that how many souls have you ever brought? So, friends, just to escape uh, the vanishing of your teeth, that's what the scripture says. Huh? All right, at least bring one soul now. All right, to the Lord, you are saved. This is the challenge. And the Lord has said very clearly in the Great Commission, the church is for what? The church is for worship. The church is for fellowship. And the church is to go out and preach the gospel. That is what the function of the church is all about. We come together, we worship the living God. We come together, we have fellowship and strengthen. Why are we having food? It's food for you not to pick up your food and come in the front and sit and eat all by yourself. That is, defeats the entire purpose. I see that same people practicing it. It defeats the purpose. The reason why we give you food is to have come together, sit down together, talk, chat. And this is how we can strengthen ourselves. And as believers, I hope to see not any more of this. Right? That we can share together, we can eat together, we can also be challenged together as we share, rather than not come in the front seat and eat all by yourself. You know, then it defeats the purpose. We can go to a restaurant and eat and we can go back home. Right? So the church is for fellowship means we have fellowship. Our fellow and ship. Not fellow oneself. Right? So this is how the church is for and also to go up. And so these days, my friend, evangelist meeting, giving tracks days are over in Malaysia. It's finished. All right, we no more can go out and give tracks to people and people are not ready for the trip. People are into all the social medias and what not. And again, we are being curtailed from giving out tracks, all right, publicly on the roadside. And so we can't give. We are not in other countries, all right. We can't have evangelistic meeting. Every of the religion has woken up. They say we are converting people. All right? And so that we have all these avenues are closed. And how then we can share? 
And this is where we just read the book of Colossians, all right, where Paul was speaking to the people in Colossae for them to reach out. Now, Colossae was not an easy place to reach out. All right, and the Colossians were also in the comfort zone, just like us. All right, they were also comfortable. They were so happy. The good church, the nice church, wonderful church, everything was so. But they're so contented. Come to church on Sunday. All right, and go to prayer meeting or Bible study. Finish, and then we go off. All right, not bothered about a single soul. And so Paul began to hit the nail at the coffin box. And Paul told them, all right, that as you come into the Christ, a new life, as you come into the new life, you need to strip off your old clothes. You know, this is a, a chantoa, it is just a metaphor. You know, when uh, your clothes get dirty, what do you do? When you are sweaty, what do you do? You change your clothes. And so Paul is using the metaphor that when you come into Christ, all right, a new life in Christ, you need a new clothes, a new garment in your life. And that's where Paul uses the word that we need to wear eight garments, eight clothes. We'll go one by one. All right? As I said to you, I'll go slow into this so that we can sing into us, that we just not listen to a sermon, flush it out and over and finish. You can see the sermon of mine thousand times, but it doesn't work, it's not no use at all. And so, my friend, we, we need to understand what Paul was trying to tell these Colossian people. You need to put on, okay? Now, here we see, as we put on, all right, two things. When we come into the Lord, when we recognize the Lord, the first two things the Lord does in our life. The first thing is that we become holy. The Lord makes us holy. The word hagios in Greek means you are being separated. You are being set apart. Okay, that means you are living in this world. You have to live in this world. If not, you have to go to a monastery and live all by yourself. Or go to some mountainside and live by yourself. All right, that's not what the Lord is calling us. He says you live in the world, but live as separated. You are set apart. All right, but look, some of us. We are not set apart. We come to church. We call ourselves holy. But look at the way we work. Lazy. Being, you know, your superiors has to be worn. And then they look at your work, put you in, in you know, in, 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 in your, in what do you call it, cold storage. Right? Then we are not transformed people. We are not set apart. We are just part of the people. We are just conformed continuously. How many of us have got this understanding? You know, we are we set apart. We must be different. Okay, that's what the Word of God says. Uh, in Romans 12, uh, 12, 2, it says that we are transformed people, not conformed people. Transform, the word trans, transport. You're going from one place to another place. So we are transformed from our old life, we come to new life, and people must see the transformed life in you. All right, people must see the transformed life in you. And that's where Paul is now telling the Colossians, People must see you and they must see you differently. All right, because you are set apart. You are set apart. You are holy. They say this person is something different. So that's the first thing the Lord does is to set you apart to make you holy. And the second one is that when you begin to know God, you become the beloved of God. My friend is a great word. Huh? You become the beloved of God. Remember in your old life you rejected God. All right, you rebelled against God. You even curse God. And you know, you don't like to come to church. You don't like to know the name of Jesus. You don't want to read the word of God at one time. But now you have come into the Lord. You read the word of God. You pray. You are now known as a beloved in God. You are very beloved in God. The book of Zechariah says, You are the apple of his eyes. You know what the people, the black one? All right, you are the apple of the eyes. You are special before him. In the book of Isaiah, let's read that. Look at Isaiah 43. Let's turn to Isaiah 43. What he tells about you. All right? I'll put your name into it. Tell us about you. Isaiah 43. Okay, look at verse 4. All right? Now, I want you to read that word of God very carefully. Yeah? Now, you see the word there. Since the word you. Don't. Use the word you. Take out the word you and put your name. 
sins, all right, your name, are precious in my sight. Sins, your name, are honored and I love you. I will give other men your place and other people in exchange of your life. You know what great blessing is this? You know, he says you are beloved in God. You are very beloved in God. That's, he loves you that much. Uh, coming to know Jesus Christ is after that, he just drops you like that and he goes on his business. No, he takes care of you. He wants to be part of your life in every aspect of your life. He wants, because you are beloved of the Lord. All right, because you've been made righteous in the presence of God. All right, you have been loved by God. You are loved by the Lord Jesus. You are beloved. All right. Abraham was called the friend of God. He was a friend of God. David was called the man who was after God's heart. And we are called beloved of God's. Friend, the great title, not only the title, the Lord means it. You are not only just holy or set apart. You are also called, you are beloved of God. You're special before him, all right? And look at this verse very clearly in Isaiah. You are precious in the sight of God. And I will love you, he says. And all these are present tense. You're precious in the sight of God, my friend. So you are that precious and look the way we live our life. Uh, he says, you're precious in my sight, but when the things that you're doing, it hurts you. Are uh, lazy, all right? We are not good testimony, all right? This is what he... His heart bleeds to see his child, his son, his daughter, all right, not living up to the standard what I'm giving you. And so he hits, Paul hits the nail, all right, of the eight garment. My friend, sometimes you don't have to preach your own life. The light of the earth, the salt of the earth will be enough people to attract you. You know, like a magnet, will come to you and say, what is different in you? We would like to know. That is the time to make the impact. Now, let's see the first garment. Now, the first garment is the, the garment of compassion. All right? Or the word here talks about the word compassion is coming from the word of oikomoro. means mercy, pity, tender-heartedness. All right, that means mercy. All right, we have to have the garment of mercy over us. You know why? Because God was so merciful to us. He was very merciful to us. All right, the scripture tells us in the book of Romans. Let's turn to it in Romans chapter 5. You will see the mercies of God. How merciful He is to us. All right, so... When he is so merciful to us, we should be also be merciful to others. Now, chapter 5. All right, in chapter 5, you look at verse 8. But God demonstrated his own love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for you. All right, while we were yet sinners, we did not come into Christ, then only Christ died for us. Huh? While we were sinners, he died for us. While we were sinners, God loved us. Do you know that? While we were sinners, still God loved us so much. He loved us so much. And that much of mercy He had on us. He just dreams when you come back to me. The mercy is there. All right, now, for a moment or two, close your eyes for the next four or five seconds. Look at your life, how life your has been. How merry your life it has been. How muddy your life has been. How evil your life has been. Just close your eyes and think for yourself about your own life. Talk about one another. Your own life. Now you will see how evil we are. And yet, now you realize how merciful our God is to us. How merciful is Jesus Christ to us. All right. So that mercy that he gives to us, friend, then our heart should be flooded in our heart for have to mercy or compassion for others. Simple as that. That's the first garment. When you have compassion for others, all right, whatever been done towards you, your compassion people will want to see you. You know, people, 
No, we don't have compassion. We, we like to have excuses, blame other people, or they always blame me. They always say this of me. They always say that of me. They, they are lying to her, you know, through their mouth. All these excuses, my friend, the Lord does not bring up the sin. Because where is your heart of compassion? Right? Now, whom do we to show compassion? Whom are we the first to show compassion? The first thing that we need to show compassion, Paul said, to the lost. People who are lost. Friend, today we are meeting people every day. All right, in your workplace, you meet people. All right, they're all lost. All right, your neighbors next door, neighbors, left and right, your back front. All right, they're lost. How are we reaching out to them? First, are we having the heart of compassion? Do we have mercy for these people? Kindness for these people. All right? Remember in the book of Matthew chapter 9, Mark chapter 19. Okay, we're not going to read it. A young man came to Jesus and said, What must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus looked at him and said, uh, Have you followed all the commandments? And he said, From the young fool, young age, I have been following. He's been dragged to church, huh? had been gone to church, he had been dragged to church from the young age, has done everything, has done Sunday school, he has a new fellowship, he has done everything. And the word says very clearly, Jesus looked at him and loved him. Compassion. Alright? Jesus, and when Jesus heard that I've done all these things, all the church going, I've done all that, Jesus looked at him and compassion on him and said, listen, go and sell all your riches and come follow me. That's it. This fellow heard the key word, riches. He won all the money to himself. He left that place. And the Bible tells us we never heard of him anymore. He's lost. Okay, now, there are people whom you speak to them, they may not want to accept the Lord. Never mind. Dust your feet and go to the next person. All right? Don't simply sit and cry. You know, this person is not coming to the door of you. If you have spoken to them and they are not willing to accept the Lord, then dust your feet and go to the next person that you have been praying for. So we have people who are lost around us. I have shared with you how one visitation of, 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 a, of a caroling, just like that, people have accepted the Lord. We just went, we song, we sing song, we pray, the prayer touched them, all right, they respond. Why? There was an opportunity. Likewise, my friend, your working career may be going through some struggle that they will never tell you. They all be smiling about. All right? It's about a story I want to tell you. Okay? This man went to the doctors and he told the doctor, I've never been happy in my life. I've never laughed. All right? So the doctor says, I'll run a test on you to see your adrenaline, all right, see your metabolism, whatever, wrong. So they did all the tests and they found out, all right, they called him and said, we did the test on you, your test is all good and fine, nothing wrong. Okay? So the doctor said, listen, you want to be happy, right? He said, go down the street, all right, and the far on the other street, there's a circus, okay? Buy a ticket and go and watch. And then one part, top, a part of the show, there will be a clown who will appear, and he will make your laughter out of your belly, you know? He said that. And the man turned around and told the doctor, that clown is me. Okay? So many people in your workplace are putting a clown face, you know, the clown face the laughter, with a nice big nose, you know, and uh, painted with, with a mouth as he is smiling. All right, friends, you never know who is suffering in your workplace and are going through some difficult time and they want to hear the word, the compassion word. All right, here, you know, the compassion word, saying the word in Matthew chapter 18, come unto me. All right, you can tell the person, my Jesus said, come unto me. Or I take my yoke, which is easy and light, that I will give rest to your soul. These are words are new to people, my friend, those who are lost. They have never heard. So when you begin an impact, when the word of compassion on them, it makes a great impact. This is why we have to have compassion. We don't laugh at people. All right? We need to have compassion for the loss. Only then we can win people. All right? You don't have to preach the word of God. You don't have to go around and show the word of God which we, your, your knowledge in the word of God is sometimes zero. Some people say, uh, the word of God is my nutrition. Uh, but the meaning of the word of God has been lost completely. They don't understand. They don't leave the word of God at all. I don't see it at all. Only talk, 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 talk. There's no action. 
All right? Action is opposite. So here we see showing compassion and people are attracted to the compassion that you have. All right? Jesus looked at the man and he loved him and told him what is wrong with him. All right? And then we talk about the wayward. There are a lot of wayward people that we see of. Pray for them. Uh, we see in the book of Luke chapter 19. All right? Luke chapter 19. Let's turn to it now. Luke chapter 19 is a story, yeah? it's a true story, and you see, we see something very strange in this place, huh? in this, this story, 19th chapter, okay, first 10 verses, yeah? alright, now, I'll read to you, he entered Jericho, and was passing through, and there was a man called by the name of Zacchaeus, he was a chief collector, and he was rich. Now, Zacchaeus was trying to see who Jesus was, was unable because of the crowd, and he was a small in stature. So he ran on ahead and climbed into a sycamore tree in order to see him, for he was about to pass through that way. Now, there was a man in Jericho who collects tax, a uh, tax collector. As you know, uh, the entire Israel was under the German, I mean, in uh, Roman control, uh, under the Roman control. And so they have to pay tax to the king, to the pharaoh. They have to pay uh, tax to the, the king. And so what happened, and, and this fellow was taking more and more taxes. You cannot question them. Like what the government say, if the government say GST has to come back, and we all have to pay through our nose. Even for a cup of tea, you pay 6%. Uh, for a cup of tea, you pay 6%. All right? A bread you buy, 6%. Man in the street is effective. Okay? So we, come, we cry for tax, 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 tax. And the same thing, this man was collecting tax. And many people in the, in the Jews hate the tax collectors. And they hated Zacchaeus. He was collecting scrupulously. Right? And then what happened? He heard about Jesus. So he wanted to see who Jesus was. And he was not a tall man. He was a short man, as they call him in the scripture. And so what he decided, he wanted to know who Jesus, he heard a lot about Jesus, he wanted to know who Jesus was as he was coming to Jericho, he ran to a sycamore tree. A sycamore tree is a small tree, yeah? and he just somehow or other he climbed over to see. Now what happened? What happened? There a man who wanted to know who this Jesus was. All right? Now look at verse 5. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry, come down for today, I must stay at your house. And he hurried and came down and received him gladly. Now, when Jesus saw this little follow up in the tree, he called him by name. Jesus knew him by name already. Yeah? All right, you know why? Jesus knows you by name. Huh? Let me tell you this. Because before you're formed in your mother's womb, he's already known your name. You're going to be named this name. He already knows you. He does not know you. God knows you. Remember this. God always remembers you. Remember that. All right, and so here we see, all right, and he called him by Zacchaeus, and he came down gladly. But there were other people, you know, sometimes when you go and sit down with non-Christians and try to talk to them, huh, there are other Christians who say, what did you for? Uh, why are they sitting with non-Christians and sitting and drinking uh, uh, a coffee and then talking to them? Huh? Look at verse 7, when they saw it, they all began to grumble, saying that he had gone to the guests of a man who is a sinner. They all hated Zacchaeus because of collecting unscrupulously taxes money. And so they said, look at Jesus, a man who was healing people, was preaching good news. He's going and sitting in the uh, in sinner's house. All right? No wrong. If you are there for to reach the person out, if you are there for gossip, then you are wrong. If you are there to wait your time, you are wrong. But if you have your heart for this person that I want to bring them to the Lord and I want to create a relationship, a friendship, all right, so that I can bring them to know the Lord, bring them to church, then it's perfectly the Lord understands you. All right? And people are grumbling. But look at it. Huh? Uh, this is the key word. Huh? Now, Jesus, as you know, he preaches messages. He gives parable stories. All right? But in this case, Jesus did not open his mouth at all. He did not talk about kingdom of God. He did not talk about Yahweh. 
He did not talk about why he came. Jesus never told Zacchaeus, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Come down to me. He never said all. What was the result by he went into the sinner's house? He saw Jesus' compassion. I'm a sinner. I'm evil. And yet God had paid compassion on me. Jesus had compassion on me. He came to my house and looked at the reaction of that one visit of him. Huh? Jesus never preached, never shed, but his compassion. Look at verse 8. Zacchaeus stopped and said to the Lord, Behold, Lord, half of my possession I will give it to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone, anything, I will give them four times as much. Repentance. Compassion came to him. His compassion touched him. Ah, oh, this is how it is. We're not just going to give food. Ah, compassion. That is not compassion at all. All right. Going and understanding them. Knowing them. All right. You have an intention on them. This is what very clearly I would like to share with you. And you know what Jesus said? Look at verse 9. Jesus said, Truly, today, salvation has come to this house. For he too is a son of Abraham. My friend, can you see this? By one visit, Zacchaeus was saved. Zacchaeus came to know Jesus. Zacchaeus became a Christian. By one, and look at the result. The result was overwhelming. Huh? He said, I will give away the possession. I will give it to the poor. And then I, whoever I've cheated them, I will give them four times back. That is a result of a repentance in action. See this, my friend. How effective, all right, the cloth of compassion. How effective is being merciful to others. There are people who have never been merciful to them. They have been so hot even in every area of their life. And so, friends, we need to understand there are a lot of wayward people. All right? I'll tell you another story. Nikki Cruz, biggest gangster in New York ghettos. David Wilkerson is a pastor. He had a heart for this gangster. And the gangsterism in ghetto. And so what happened, David Wilkerson spent some time in New York ghettos and to reach out to all these gangsters. Now, if you can get the book called Cross and the Switchblade, go and buy it and read it. You will see the story. A yeah, true story, yeah. All right? And so what happened, Nicky Cruz is a gangster number one. And so David Wilkerson was trying to reach out to him every now and then, trying to say, you know, God loves you, Jesus loves you, and that fellow will give him some fling words and then he will walk away from him. And one day, you know, there was a counter that with David Wilkerson and he cornered Nikki and said, Nikki, God, Jesus loves you. You know what Nikki said? I wish I had a knife, I would cut you to a thousand pieces now for you to come and taunting me. And David Wilkerson said, you can cut me to the thousand pieces and the thousand pieces will tell you Jesus loves you. And what a powerful, compassion, merciful, powerful government David Wilkerson had. He was not frightened. And David Wilkerson repented. Sorry, Nicky Cruz repented. He came to know Jesus and finally Nicky Cruz committed his life to the Lord and he became a pastor. What a powerful testimony, my friend. David Wilkerson never preached to them. His kindness, his compassion was with them, shared with them. Friend, these are the powerful testimonies that we have. So what is the garment that we are wearing? Are we have mercy? Or do we have mercy upon people? All right, what about the lonely people? Uh, what about the lonely people? Okay, you might say, well, how do we know lonely people? Can I give you one example? Look at all the security guards. Then the police, they come here. And they work as a security guard. Do you know how lonely they are? They work for 12 hours. The next 12 hours, you go back and sleep, and cook and eat, and then come back to work. How lonely they are. Do you lend a compassion heart to them? Cook a meal for them. Or right, give something for them. Alright? They will be touched, my friend, by a one packet 
you know, your nasani money gave them. If you give them a little bit of rice to them, you know, go home and cook and give. You know how grateful they are? They are lonely people. They may be foreigners. All right? I applaud the migrant ministry, what they're doing. All right? They are lonely people. We can reach out to your compassion. Friends, you are bringing them into the kingdom of God, not into the PJ grace of God, but you bring them into the kingdom of God, wherever they are. They are lonely people, a lot of lonely people. Lonely old people are in their houses. They are very lonely. They are lonely people. You can reach out to them with heart of compassion and bring Christ into their life. And this is what the Lord made you too. That's what the Lord says, you are my beloved. That's what I set you apart. How many old ladies are living in their own home alone? Have you brought them? You give them food, you give them whatever you want to give them, but not Christ. How oh, I need I need it is. So friend, we must have the heart. We must have the heart. So a heart of reaching out to them. What about the hurting? What about those who have got sickness? What about those who are poor? And this is what we should be doing, have compassion. Let me give you one word and then I'll close. Let's all turn to Isaiah 58. Isaiah 58. Look at verse 7. Is it not to divide your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into the house when you see the naked to cover him and not to hide yourself from your own flesh? This is very compassion. When you see them hungry, do you give them food? Do you, when you see homeless, do you bring them into your house? When you see them naked, all right, do you give them a clothes? Friend, these are some powerful messages the word is giving. Compassion. So we must have the heart of compassion, the garment of compassion, if you want to reach out. Your compassion is, a, is an impact into their life, my friend. They said you're so merciful. You're so understanding. Spend time. You know, we have many, we come back home from work, or we sit in the house, watch TV, or watch your video, or watch your, your laptop, watch everything. That's all about it, and that's it. Have you given? You know, we are so particular about giving 10% to the Lord. But the Lord is not only asking your 10% of your money, He's also asking your 10% of your time in the 24 hours. At least can you give 20 minutes to someone? You go and share, be with them, show them a heart of compassion to them. Friend, that will be an impact. I am showing you here how to reach out, not to sit in your own comfort zone, in your own house of comfort. All right? Get out. It's time for us to get out so that we can challenge, we can show people to come to the Lord. So friends, the first government is the government of compassion, mercy. He has been so merciful to us. We have to show the mercy to us. We all don't deserve to be saved. We all don't deserve to have eternal life. We all know that. Because we are sinners, my friend. And yet, Jesus loved us. And so we responded to that. So next week, we will see the next garment. How the next garment also can be able to be the light of this world. Let us pray.